Hey, today I'm talking about three movies that I have wanted to watch for a really long time but haven't been able to for whatever reason. But then recently my lovely friend Nicole lent them to me. Oh wait, this isn't right. Hold on. There we go. So, today I am talking about Fantastic Mr. Fox, The Descendants, and The Coal Miner's Daughter. Festivities! Fantastic Mr. Fox. This is a 2009 Wes Anderson film. If you're unfamiliar, this is based off a Roald Dahl book of the same name. And the basic premise is it is about this fox and his wife and them just trying to live their life and Mr. Fox trying to, you know, be a good person, but like he also has his instincts and he, he knows who he is as a person, but it, it kind of clashes with who he needs to be as a person. And it's that whole internal struggle of still being true to yourself but then also needing to be a good husband and a good father and all that stuff. And yeah, this movie was great. I loved pretty much everything about it. George Clooney did great. I actually enjoyed Meryl Streep for a change. <laughs> Sorry Nicole. I don't like Meryl Streep and she's really offended that I don't like Meryl Streep but Nothing I can do about it. I just don't like her. Really, all the performances were great. I particularly loved Willem Dafoe. I didn't recognize him at first, but I was like, wait, is that Willem Dafoe? And it was, and I was like, yeah. I like this. I don't know, it was just so much fun. I really love the style and aesthetic of it. Yeah, this was this was such an easy really liked. So yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. I definitely recommend it. You've probably already seen it though, in which case I definitely recommend a rewatch because it still, without a doubt, holds up. It's such a fantastic movie. Next up is... The Descendants. This is a 2013 film starring George Clooney again and also featuring Shaylee Woodley. It also has Judy Greer in it. I didn't know she was in this and it, was, it made me so happy to see her. She's great. I love her. If you don't love Judy Greer, you're wrong. Anyway, the basic premise is George Clooney plays a husband and father whose wife recently got into an accident and now he is struggling to be a single parent while also kind of just figuring out his emotions with his wife because their marriage was kind of on the rocks prior to the accident. And so it's a big complex mess of emotions. And what I will 100% say this movie nails is emotions. They do emotions so incredibly well. It's not just like big strong emotions but they do have big strong emotion parts. It's also more subtle emotions, more complex emotions. They just really really nail it. What I was a little on the fence about with this movie is it, it takes place in Hawaii and the movie is definitely about Hawaii which I actually liked a lot but I wish there would have been more native of Hawaiians in this movie because basically all of the main characters are white. That's a bit frustrating because when it's a movie about this place that's very not white it should really have some white characters but being able to put that aside thoroughly enjoyed this movie. It was a really great emotional experience. It's about grief and about fatherhood and about greed and being emotionally there and just like I don't know a lot of things and it's really really well done. It's a really well done movie. I was a little afraid that Shailene was going to be, be kind of like a stereotypical teenager and just annoying and obnoxious the entire time but she really wasn't. She was actually like my highlight of the movie. I liked her a lot in this. She was great. As was Judy Greer. Yeah so it, it's a good solid emotional movie that does get a bit sad but it's also lighthearted. It's just an all-around solid movie. So I again would recommend this one. It's a good emotional experience. And lastly it's Coal Miner's Daughter. This is a 1980 film starring Sissy Spacek and Tommy Lee Jones. It's a biopic about the country singer Loretta Lynn and it was a really interesting movie. I wanted to watch it because I got really into Sissy Spacek last year. She's a fantastic actor. She actually won Best Actress for this which I think she definitely deserved. She did a great job especially with the singing. That was impressive. What I really would praise this movie on is it's not formulaic when it comes to biopics or even music biopics. It honestly just kind of takes its time with the story it wants to tell. I don't think it's until like halfway through the movie when she finally like starts on her music career and I think that was the correct choice. It spent a lot of time just kind of working on the fundamentals of the two leads relationship which really is the backbone of the whole story. I also love that it was about both of them and that they made both of them really complex characters with different wants and needs and just how their relationship kind of pulled and pushed 
pushed, but still worked. I thought that was very, very fascinating. What my two big reservations are with this movie, the first one being an aspect of the entire first act. So basically, the movie starts off with Sissy Spacek, who is 31 years old, playing a 13-year-old. And man, she does not even kind of look like a 13-year-old here. I don't understand why they decided to do it like I do, because a fourth of the movie is set as her as 13 years old. So I get why they wanted their star on the first quarter of the movie. But at the same time, it's like, no, this is, ugh, she does not look 13. And then Tommy Lee Jones is supposed to be 19 at the beginning. He has his old man face already. He looks like he's in his 30s because he is. And so that was, ugh. That just didn't look good. But putting that aside, what really brought this movie down was that they tried to normalize the fact that a 19-year-old was marrying and about to have babies with a 13-year-old. That's really, really gross. I don't care who you are, that's gross. And what's so interesting too is that Loretta was very adamant that she was 13, almost 14, when she met and married her husband. But really, she was 15, almost. 16, which, I mean, it's still not good, that's still gross, but I would definitely say 15 almost 16 is better than 13 almost 14. Like, those two years at that age are a big difference. Ugh. It's uh, such a weird aspect of her as a person that she is adamant that she was very young when she got married. And the movie paints it as like, it's a good thing she got married. Cause it is her husband who like pushed her into this career, lovingly pushed her into this career. And what's so interesting too is because Sissy is 31 years old when she's playing a 13 year old, you kind of forget that she's supposed to be a 13 year old. So it's more easy for you to accept her wanting to marry Tommy Lee Jones when she's young because she doesn't look young because she isn't young. But yeah, it's weird. But like the rest of the movie works so well that if you can kind of compartmentalize that aspect of this movie and put it to the side, the rest of it's great. So that's why I ended up putting it in the quite like category. Would I recommend it? Yeah, if it looks interesting. I know that first section is gonna be difficult to get through, but like if you can bust through the grossness of it, yeah, it's definitely worth a watch. Alrighty, now for today's rankings. First up, we got Fantastic Mr. Fox, student number eight in the really like section. And then not too far behind is The Descendants, sitting in number 12, also in the really liked category. And then bringing up the rear is Coal Miner's Daughter, sitting at number 25 in the quite liked category. I forgot to rank it till just now. And that is out of a total of 54 old movies so far this year.